Here, let's check out the empirical evidence for the Heckscher Olin model. And uh, the first uh, piece of empirical evidence is so called the Leontief paradox. Okay. So, here um, we are looking at the factor content of the US exports and imports for the year 1962. The first line we see is uh, amount of capital, so here means machinery, equipment, tools, used to produce $1 million worth of uh, U.S. imports and exports. Okay? And the second line shows the amount of labor used to produce $1 million worth of uh, U.S. imports and exports. Okay? The third line we are uh, trying to find the capital labor ratio. In other words, dollars of uh, capital per worker. So here we use the first line divided by the second line. That's how we get this ratio here. Okay. Now, um, if we assume that the U.S. is better capital endowed, okay, than um, labor. According to the HO model, we should export more capital intensive goods, right? And import uh, more labor intensive goods because the capital intensive goods are, you know, where our comparative advantage is, right? However, here by comparing these two numbers, we find that the capital labor ratio is actually lower among the U.S. exports than our imports. In other words, based upon these two numbers, uh, the evidence shows that we are actually export labor-intensive uh, goods and import capital-intensive goods. Okay? So this would be against the HO model, right? Now, um, over the years, economists come up with um, several possible explanations okay, for this paradox, okay, for the evidence which is not support, uh, uh, supportive of the HO model. And, uh, the first thing we look at is the same technology across countries that assumption we made um, when we discussed the HO model. Okay? We said that the technology is assumed to be the same across countries. And um, in reality, it, is, it, it could be the case that uh, U.S. has much more technologies or more sophisticated technologies than other countries. So what we export is um, instead of the capital intensive products, we're actually export uh, technology intensive ones. Okay? And of course, you know, in, in this um, evidence, the capital labor ratio does not really capture uh, the level of technologies okay, in different countries. So that could be a missing factor. Okay? Uh, which is quite important, but not consider not being considered in this case. Okay? The second possible explanation is unusual data used. So here, uh, it is possible that you know, in 1962, that year, uh, something unique happened, okay? and that uh, specifically led to this. Uh, um, numbers, okay, these numbers. Uh, the second, uh, I'm sorry, another uh, possible uh, case would be, you know, here we just focus upon the United States, okay, so the U.S. might be uh, unique in some way, um, like different from other countries, okay. However, um, I think recently uh, economists look at other countries Okay, and find um, similar things. Okay, in other words, uh, in those countries, uh, which 
um, should be exported more like capital intensive goods, but they actually um, the uh, the actual number or data shows that they they actually imported more uh, capital intensive goods and exported more labor intensive goods. Okay. In other words, the U.S. is not an isolated case. Okay. Um, the third, uh, which could be the most uh, convincing explanation, is uh, here we fail to distinguish between the skilled and unskilled labor. So we just say, you know, labor per million dollars, right, or capital labor ratio. But we did not, uh, you know, break down and look at the scaled versus long scaled or no scaled, right? And uh, we get this um, idea by looking at the last uh, two rows in the table. So here um, it shows the average years of education per worker. And we do find that among the U.S. exports, this number is larger than our imports. In other words, you know, we do find that um, among our exports, there are more um, skilled labor intensive ones than our imports and the last line is uh, proportion of engineers and scientists in workforce okay and then we find this number is higher among our exports than our imports okay which is consistent with again the actual model and the assumption that uh, in the u.s we have more relatively more uh, r and d capacities Okay, or uh, resources. Okay, and um, now um, we already check out this chart, right? Uh, during our virtual meeting, we said that you know uh, on the far right, and uh, we put the GDP uh, share here uh, as a benchmark to compare, and we do find that you know um, the U.S. have has um, better endowed in physical capital, R&D scientists, and skilled labor, right? And if you pay more attention to these first three uh, types of resources, uh, which the U.S. is better endowed, you do find that the physical capital, relatively speaking, um, is not as much endowed as the R&D scientists and the skilled labor. Right, so that's why uh, some economists would argue that you know we shouldn't be surprised with the results of the Leontief paradox, okay? Because the physical capital is not really uh, the the uh, the strongest or the most endowed uh, resources we have, okay? All right, now let's take a look at um. The second piece of empirical evidence, okay, which shows the scale intensity and the U.S. Ex U.S. imports from the following countries. Okay, now uh, two things here we need to explain before we discuss the, um, you know, the the figure. Okay, the first one is we divide um, the U.S. imports into uh, five groups according to the scale in intensity okay so um, these five groups are least scaled second least scaled sec second most scaled and uh, most scaled i'm sorry four four groups right four groups um, based upon the scale intensity okay so um, on the graph you know the green bar shows the least scaled okay and the purple one is the most scaled. Okay? And um, also based upon our, um, you know, these sex uh, treating partners, we, we divided them into two groups. Okay? The first group, which uh, are demonstrated on the left-hand side of the figure, are Bangladesh, Cambodia, and Haiti. And on the right-hand side, you can find France, Germany, and the UK. Okay? So, once again, based upon the um, the common sense, we would believe that uh, 
on the left hand side these three developing economies are better uh, endowed in labor more specifically unskilled labor right and on the right hand side these uh, three developed european economies are better endowed in uh, skilled labor okay and so here we look at you know the uh, height of these bars shows uh, the share of that group of products we imported in the total uh, imports from that country. Okay, you find that here Bangladesh, Cambodia, and Haiti. Um, you know the our imports from these countries are actually dominated by the least scaled um, sector or or products. Okay. And on the right hand side uh, from France, Germany, and UK, uh, we imported predominantly the most scaled uh, products. Okay, so this piece of the uh, empirical evidence is actually in favor of the HO model. Okay, it's pretty consistent with what the model predicts. All right, now after checking out the cross country um, evidence, let's focus upon one country, China, here, and look at the over time um, evolution okay, of its comparative advantage. Now, here, once again, we divided um, all the US uh, imported uh, goods from China into four groups on the basis of their uh, scale intensity okay um, it's the same as the previous one um, but the difference is we just look at china in different years from uh, 1983 uh, to 2012 okay now uh, according to the HO model um, because of the economic takeoff um, in china so it should have you know higher and higher income and then they should spend more resources um, in their public education so their labor force over time should be better and better educated and okay? should get um, more and more skilled and so uh, based upon the HO theorem then we would expect that uh, the US import of the low scaled or least scaled uh, products from China would gradually decline, which again is uh, exactly what this chart shows. Okay, and uh, the U.S. import of relatively high scaled or even most scaled uh, products from China should gradually uh, increase. Again, roughly speaking, that is true. Okay, we do find an outlier here uh, from 88 to 92 because of the political um, uh, factor or influence in that uh, period gets a lower one. But again, overall, the trend of uh, U.S. imports of these uh, most scaled products from China are actually going up. Okay, so this is also a, uh, in favor of the HO model. Okay. Now here, let's quickly draw the conclusion of this chapter when we discuss the HO model, which is uh, two products, cloth and food, two factors, uh, labor and capital, and two countries, home and foreign. So that's what we call two by two by two model. Okay. The key difference between the HO model and the previous models is here, every factor is mobile. Okay. And the, the key conclusion is, number one, the pattern of trade, um, which is uh, specified in the HO theory, okay? Basically, we're saying that every economy exports its abundant resources, okay? And then, uh, the influence upon the income distribution uh, is the stopper Samuelson theory. What we're saying is, you know, the owners of the abandoned factors would benefit from trade and the owners of the scarce uh, factor would uh, uh, hurt by trade 
and we check out the empirical evidence and find it's mixed.